Have you ever used artificial intelligence like TikTok filters to turn yourself into an astronaut or ride a dragon? It's fun and harmless, right? Not quite. AI generates millions of images a day. And according to a recent study, just one image can consume as much energy as charging your phone. That's right. Just like most things, AI has a carbon footprint. We definitely shouldn't um, kind of view AI as a costless thing. I think it's very easy to view it as this abstract thing on your computer that doesn't have any impact, but it, but it does. So where did those emissions come from? Well, around the world, most AI is hosted in data centers like this one. That sound you're hearing, those are fans being used to keep the hardware cool as these computers are sucking up a lot of electricity and generating a lot of heat. Running AI is running any other computer program. You have an input, you want an output, it's going to do lots and lots of operations. And doing lots of operations for one answer means that there's a lot of energy and electricity. From Netflix recommendations to smart cars and image filters, AI is a big part of our everyday lives. According to the International Energy Agency, data centers and transmission networks account for 1% of global energy-related emissions. That's almost as much as the aviation industry. And AI is a quickly growing piece of that, but it's not all bad. It's also an important tool in the climate fight. AI is being used in all sorts of ways to address climate action, from helping us better forecast solar and wind on the power grid to help us better integrate those into power grids, to helping better optimize heating and cooling systems in buildings to help kind of improve the efficiency of those systems. In the global south, climate change is increasing locust outbreaks and threatening food security. An AI tool uses data on soil moisture, wind, humidity, satellite images, and more to predict locust swarms in some African countries. Farmers receive text alerts up to three months in advance of an outbreak. AI-powered models are also providing earlier warning systems for natural disasters like floods and can help map flood patterns to guide disaster response. Here at home, you can see AI in action in some potato fields in PEI. Meet the AgriScout robot. There were a few people who stopped on the road to see what was going on, what this robot is actually doing in the field. It may look like a rover that belongs on Mars, but it's actually helping potato farmers using cameras to look for potential disease in their crop. It will generate a map with the location information. They can load that map on their cell phone. It will direct you where those infected plants are and get those out. We are planning to attach a robotic arm to it that wherever it picks on the symptom, it gets those plants out. And rising temperatures and drought conditions are making wildfire seasons more extreme. Bring in AI. German-based company Dryad is building AI-trained sensors for ultra-early wildfire detection. The company has deployed 20,000 worldwide. These are solar-powered gas sensors. So behind this membrane here is a gas sensor that is um, um, sensitive to hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and volatile organic compounds. So it actually is like an electronic nose. Um, that can actually smell a fire. And we can um, detect fires as small as a campfire, uh, even before there is an open flame uh, sometimes, as long as the gas molecules are hitting the sensor. So we can protect about the size of a football field. AI is becoming more widely adopted across society, and the types of models that we're using are also changing. Some of the models are getting larger and larger. This picture is changing, and we really have to be on the lookout for the growth in AI's emissions footprint. And fundamentally, one thing that is challenging in getting a hold of that is that there isn't enough transparency. AI will continue to contribute to greenhouse gas emissions until we move away from fossil fuels. Having an energy grid that is less carbon intensive means that for the same amount of computation, for the same model, you're going to have less of a carbon impact. AI is here to stay. We will only use it more and more in our daily lives. But experts say we have to think about how we use it and its consequences. We can't really afford to be disrupted for five years 
thinking about whether the AI is going to be the terminator instead of addressing how it's going to impact uh, climate emissions.